Today has been a day. <laughs> Hello, internet friendos. Welcome to the chaos that is this entire video. Might as well do it because at this point, if I don't, I am never going to finish it at all. In case you're wondering, it's been a couple of months since I filmed the last part of this video. It was supposed to come out a couple of months ago. I finished filming everything and it was fine and everything was good and it looked great and then I lost half of my footage. Files got corrupted, can't find the originals, it's gone, whatever. So that means that the intro was gone as well. So this is the intro take four now of me saying the exact same thing. So I'm gonna cut to the chase. Throughout COVID, I was very interested in The Witcher. Love the show, love the books, love the games. Really, really wanted to do something to show my love for the entire universe. One of my favorite characters is Yennefer. If you can already tell from the video, that is what I decided to do, is to make um, Yennefer's costume from The Witcher 3 basically as it shows up in the game. I liked the costume a lot. Really, personal preference was a big thing for this one. I like the colors, I like the design a lot, and uh, it's a very recognizable costume as well. So I decided to go with that one. Today, we are going to go through the progress, my thinking process throughout the whole thing, as well as some of the sources that I used to get uh, the information. I had footage of the fabrics. That footage is now gone and disappeared into the void. So I will show you again the fabrics and it'll probably be two parts because this project was super huge. It took me months to do. There's so many pieces to it. It was insane, but I'm really happy to share it with everybody now and show you the process behind the scenes of how I did it from start to finish. So friends, without any more further ado, let's actually get into making this project. So I don't have the actual pieces intact anymore, but ah, success. I do have pieces of the fabrics as samples here. This is something that I kind of like to do. Um, I think it's a theater trick. I'm not sure. I learned it from Bernadette Banner's YouTube channel actually because she is amazing. It's pretty much like cataloging fabric for costumes, garments that you make. So I actually put pieces of every material that I used in this book here. So here's the brocade. Very shiny. You can see there is definitely some flowers and some sparkles kind of in there. It was the closest that I could find to Yennefer's jacket in the real world. So I decided to go with that one. And then this is literally just broadcloth. It's just plain black fabric that I used for the lining. The vinyl that I used for the boots. I try not to use vinyl and I actually hadn't before this project, but it was kind of the only thing that was going to work well for what I needed it for, which was mostly just the boots. And then this is a sample of the undershirt fabric, which is literally just white cotton. This was actually from a bed sheet that I used. So when you're looking for fabrics, sometimes the most unlikely places are the best places that you can find for stuff. So this was like literally super cheap. Didn't really have to worry about buying a whole bunch of fabric that was really expensive, but it worked perfectly. And then this is the fabric I used for the sash. I was going to actually use this for the jacket, so I have a heck ton of it left over, but later found out that if you kind of scratch away at it, it does leave all these little like black flecky things everywhere, so I have a feeling it's not going to hold up for very long, which is why I kind of just use it for the sash. Plain black satin I used to line the sash. The little notions, so I got embroidery thread here for the detail threads. Just some cording I picked up to do the loops on the jacket. Twisted cord for all the little bows at the bottom of her sash that I can put actually a picture of right here. Over here, I've got a sample of the ribbon that I sewed both sides onto and then looped around on the jacket. And then here, I've got velvet. That was for the pants and the gloves. Same type of satin, just a little narrower for the pants. Shiny embroidery thread for, what did I use it for? Does it say? Uh... Oh, I used it for um, the stitching on the pants. Yeah, I did use that for the stitching because it matches the satin a little bit better than just a flat cotton embroidery thread. And then this is the faux fur that I used for the bracers and for that little stole thing that she has as well. Piece of the cording that was used, bracelet ties and the little tie off on that fur piece. And then just the threads that I used and a little bit of interfacing. But yeah, that's kind of everything that I used to make her costume. Again, I wish I had the actual footage when uh, it was actually being done, but alas, we cannot all have nice things. So this is the best I could do. But anyway, let's get back to the video. 
So this is an image from the official CD Projekt Red PDF document of Yennefer's outfit. I'll link the original PDF in the description. But as you can see, this project is frankly enormous. The sheer amount of pieces in this thing is bordering on insane. So to break it all down, I've decided to do this in two parts. Today's part will be focusing on the pants, gloves, and stole, leaving the jacket, undershirt, and boots for future me to scream about later. Even though they're the simpler pieces of the bunch, these items are going to take some serious time to nail down correctly, and I want this costume to be as game accurate as I can possibly make it. So let's get going into the first part, which is the pants. For the pants, because they are so tight fitting and the velvet I'm using is stretchy, I decided to do this the easiest way I could and took a pair of leggings that I own, traced them out on some newspaper, and called that my pattern. It is in no way glamorous and I probably could have drafted and made up a pattern specifically for this costume, but why do that when a perfectly good pattern exists in clothes that already fit you? It served my purposes, so I consider that a success. Then, just to make sure I did it right, and because these leggings are quite a bit stretchier than the velvet I'll be using, I drafted a quick mock-up from an old piece of stretch fabric that I had in my reuse stash. Fun fact, this was actually my first attempt at sewing a dress, and it turned out so bad that I immediately scrapped it and never looked at it again. At least it's getting some use in this project, and I'll probably use it again for scraps later on. But before I can move on with cutting everything out, we have to deal with problem number one. Hello! So, it is the next day. If you can't tell by the ridiculous echo, I am not in my normal space because um, it's occurred to me, maybe washing a potentially heavily dyed material in my washing machine might not be the uh, best idea. So, I'm in my bathroom and we are going to try to wash this stuff with laundry detergent and a tub because staining the washing machine is not really something that I want to do right now. Yeah, so that's what we're gonna do instead. Let's see how it goes. <laughs> We've got the tub full and I'm gonna grab the velvet. And um, for anybody who's trying to do this themselves, I have no idea if this is going to work. I've never done it before. So if it works, then great. If it doesn't, then don't do what I'm about to do. Dun. So much fluff. I don't think I could escape, esca escape. I don't think I could escape the fluffs if I if I wanted to. Either. I like to live dangerously. Whoa! All of the bubbles have dissolved, and actually, this could just be the reflection. Oh, it's totally not. You gotta see this. Very, very interesting. So I should have shown what the water looked like before I did this. But now you can see, like this isn't reflection at all. Whoa, look at that. This water was like blue with soap before I did this. So just the fact that it looks like brown. So I'm gonna swish this around a little bit more. Yeah, but at a glance, that is some serious, serious dye. I'm actually gonna take the shower curtain out of there because I don't want that to get stained. Yeah, definitely glad that I did this beforehand because that, that is intense. It did in fact get even worse after I turned off the camera, but I forgot to record it. So just trust me when I say that this was definitely necessary. So this is probably as uh, rinsed as I am going to get this fabric. Surprisingly full of dye. Um, if you are wary about staining your washing machine, bathtubs work great. I will be doing it again if I'm using fabrics again that aren't really affected much by water. Don't do this with satin, probably would not be a good idea. After the fiasco that was washing the velvet, I could finally get to work cutting out my finished pants pattern from the actual fabric. First I traced around each piece, then cut around the traced lines, leaving some room for seam allowance since I didn't include it in the pattern. Then I sewed each pant leg together at one side, stitching the white ribbon over top of the entire seam before realizing I had come across problem two. So this was around the time where my microphone finished its brief time on this planet.
So here's voiceover Hannah to explain what exactly is going on. So basically, after sewing one of the pan legs together and actually looking at the fabric, it had occurred to me that I had made an egregious error. If you've ever worked with velvet, you'll quickly learn that it has a nap. It's a directional fabric. So the fibers that give velvet its soft texture actually lay one single direction on the fabric. And what this does is that when you look at the velvet head on, if your pieces aren't all cut from the same direction, you end up with what I've got here, which is one piece that looks really shiny and on cheaper velvets a little less professional, and one side that is very dark, almost matte appearance and with a much deeper color. Now, when I was cutting this, I did cut them all from the same direction, which is the one on the left. So in theory, all should be fine, right? Except the one on the left is significantly shinier than the matte one, which looking at her pants is much more similar to how they are depicted on her character, which means that I now have to pretty much recut the whole pant pattern again. If you hear anything, it's me screaming into the void. I had already cut out one side before I filmed so I could show you why the whole thing is important. So to save going back and showing you literally the exact same thing that I just did, here is a little time skip so that you don't have to suffer through the process with me. Then came time to finish the waistband with some 1 inch elastic and finally add all the tiny stitches to the front and back of the pants. I just did this with a needle and some shiny embroidery thread and with that the pants are complete. Next, after the pants came the gloves, and I did them in the easiest way I possibly could, just traced my hand on a piece of newspaper, ending where I wanted the gloves to end and cutting it out of the scrap velvet pieces I had left over. The gloves also get an interesting addition of an almost half size bracer. I don't really know what you would call these pieces, but I made them out of some scrap pieces of thin EVA foam I got from Michaels. I cut a vaguely trapezoid shape in the dimensions of my forearm, plus a half circle shape for the rim of the bracers, heat treated them, and glued it all together with contact cement. Then I painted them black, added some varnish to imitate the look of a shiny leather, and took some plain black embroidery thread to add the small stitches to the edge. Finally, I cut some fur strips from the same fur I'm going to use for the stole, and glued them to the top of the bracers to finish them. After the gloves came the stole, which I actually didn't know the name of until doing this project, I always called it the fur scarf thing in my costume notes. Instead of drawing a pattern on my own body, I used a dress form instead. It made it a lot easier to see the stole in proportion of a real human figure, rather than tracing it out on the floor and checking it against a mirror over and over. It worked out great, so I then transferred the pattern from the scrap fabric I used to drape it and retraced it on some pieces of tracing paper. Then came the fur. To be honest, I bought way too much of this stuff. I definitely could have gotten away with buying only half of what I actually bought, but oh well. I'm sure I'll use it for something else down the line and at least I know for next time. Then I pinned the pattern to the fur, traced and cut it out, and finally hemmed all the edges with a whip stitch before adding the silver cording. And with that, part one of Yennefer's outfit is complete. So there you have it, friends. And before I show you the finished pieces, I just wanna say a huge thank you to everybody who watched the video. I've really enjoyed making these and I have so many more fun projects in the works. So if you wanna see more of what I do, feel free to like the video, subscribe, do all of the fun stuff down there, and keep an eye out for part two of making Yennefer's costume where things get even crazier. That jacket is not going to make itself, so you won't wanna miss it. But for now, thank you so much for watching and without any further ado, let's Let's have a look at the finished pieces.